Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Against the National League, he's a little bit 
the power about his side, and he calls out, and he wants to check it out with Clay Dalrymple. So Dalrymple meets him halfway. The batting order for the Phils tonight, in case you're keeping a scorecard, is second baseman Tony Taylor, third baseman Richie Allen, center fielder Tony Gonzalez, right fielder Johnny Callison, left fielder Wes Covington, first baseman Roy Severs, catcher Clay Dalrymple, shortstop Bobby Wine, and pitcher Jim Bunny. The umpires, Ken Burkhardt behind the plate. It's Sudol at first, Paul Pryor at second, Frank Sikori around at third. Now the conference has been completed. Dalrymple again is behind the plate, and Tim Harkness is in and waiting. Running still in trouble getting the sign. He has it now, and it's a no wind up delivery to one two pitch. He has struck them both out, and that brings up Ron Hutt. Hutt is two for five, batting 400. He got the first net hit of the season last night in the first inning, and Ron Hutt up the middle. He is batting number three in the batting order again tonight. Last season, he hit 272 for the Mets. It is considerably cooler here in Philadelphia tonight than it was last night, although it is also drier than it was last night. The pitch to the right hand batter, and it is in there for a ball strike. Breaking ball. Well, up to now, Jim Bunning has made a rather auspicious debut in the National League. He makes his off season home in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, just across the river from Cincinnati. Pitch is in there for a ball strike, a two strike count. During the off season, Jim Bunning does a lot of radio and television work. I'm going to do uh, a number of television shows with Jim Bunny from time to time. Here's a two-strike delivery, and it is outside for a ball, one and two. Wind is blowing directly out towards center field here at Johnny Mac Stadium this evening. Most of you met that know last night in the opener. The Bills defeated the Mets by a score of 5-3, but it was a battle all the way.
But Tim Harkness is first, but not in time to get Tony Taylor, who placed the ball well on the third base line and beat it out for the first base of the ball game. So the Phils have a runner, and Richie Allen is coming up. This is the youngster who broke in last night. Great year in the International League at Little Rock last year. Played there primarily as an outfielder. But the Phils think he's going to be the big, big help for them at third base. Ballard works off the stretch now. The pitch to the right-hand batter. And it's in there for a call strike as Richie Allen bluffed the pot and then moved on back. George Myatt is coaching at third base. Tina Lowry at first base for the Philadelphia Phillies. And their red and white home uniforms. Here to throw over to first, not in time. If Ballard had not been able to pitch tonight, it would have been Jack Fisher, his roommate. Here to throw over, and Taylor dives back in safely. It counts to Richie Allen to play the strike one. Ballard again off the stretch, and the pitch. Outside, throw to first, not in time. Richie Allen has shortened up and throw to bump the ball. No score. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. Second game of the season. This is a two-game series. The Mets are off tomorrow. So are the Phils, for that matter. The Phils then go on to Chicago. The Mets, of course, go back home to open up Shea Stadium on Friday afternoon. is taken high. He started to swing and held it up. And it's two and one. Allen swung his body around. Did not swing the bat. Tony Taylor, the base runner at first, has excellent speed. As evidenced uh, when he beat out the front.
fly ball off and out of play, and it's one and two. George Altman took a little batting practice, worked out before the game tonight. He is still uh, out of action with the sore shoulder, but uh, the guess here is that he'll be in the lineup on Friday at Shea Stadium. Chicago Cubs are in Pittsburgh to play the Pirates tonight. We have the warm-up. Freddie Norman, 21 years of age, will be going for the Cubs, and Joe Gibbon will be going for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now to Tony Gonzalez. Here's the pitch and it's one on foul off to the left side and out of play. The American League, the Los Angeles Angels are at Washington tonight to play the Senators, the warm-up there, Barry Lattman and Vinny Daniels. The Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees postponed again today because of rain. They're scheduled to go tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. The other clubs in the American League not scheduled. The National League, the Cardinals, are scheduled to meet the Dodgers again tonight in Los Angeles. Colfax shut the cards out last night. Milwaukee is at San Francisco to play the Giants. Houston and Cincinnati not scheduled. Gonzalez waits for the one-two pitch. It's on the way, and it's a little high for ball. Two and two. One man on the runner in second. The net outfield is swung around toward left on this left-hand batter. Gonzalez likes to go to the opposite field a lot.
course, there are many easy ways to get to Shea Stadium. The IRT Flushing subway line to the Willard Point Station. On Friday, there will be a train from Times Square every six minutes with extra cars. Long Island Railroad will have six trains running from Penn Station to the World Fair Station between 11 a.m. and 1.29. So, uh, there are many easy ways to get to Shea Stadium. Of course, if you're driving, you can come out to Grand Central Parkway. If you're coming from Westchester, either the Block Whitestone Bridge or the Traveler Bridge. We're going to the top of the second mile, and here's Ralph Steiner. Okay, Lindsay. Hi there, everybody. On the mound for the New York Mets is Jim, for the Philadelphia Phillies is Jim Bunning, and his first pitch gets on by the catcher, and it's his ball one. Bunning turned out in great style in his first start of the National League. He has struck out the side in the first. Now he's working to Jesse Gondor. Jim getting Eddie Greenball looking, Tim Harkness swinging, and Ron Hunt swinging. His first three batters in the National League, he has struck out. Now the one strike pitch to Gondor. And it's bounced down the short. Picked up by Bobby Wine to throw to first base in time for the out. But Jim Bunning, who had a chance to set a consecutive strikeout mark, fell just a little bit short. The mark in the National League is eight consecutive strikeouts held by Matt Turcon, Johnny Padre, and Jim Maloney. The American League is seven held by Ryan Duran. Strikeout mark he raised for Jim Bunny, and now the batter will be Frank Thomas. Frank had two for four in his ball game last night. That was the first game he was able to play in 14 days because he's been bothered by a sore arm. Bunning, big, strong right hander with a good fastball. The first pitch to Thomas, a check and a swing, not in time. Strike on the outside corner. Bunning with a curveball. Bunning has a big, round, sort of sidearm curveball. He throws most of the time and takes something off of the pitch and then he has a real good fastball. He's pitched a no-hit ball game. He has led the American League in strikeouts so he has pitched good ball in his career. And he comes back to Thomas with a fastball. This one is fouled off and Frank that time had a half swing. Running pitched a no-hit no-run game against Boston in 1958. 1957, he led the American League in wins with 20. And in 1959 and 1960, he led the American League in strikeouts with identical strikeout totals of 201. Last year, he struck out 196 in 248 innings with 69 walks. Now he comes back to Thomas with a hard fastball. It's on just off the outside corner. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Wearing number 14 for the Philadelphia Phillies. No score in the ball game. One out in the top of the second. Now the right-hander in the short windup, and it pitched back to Thomas. Foul back on the screen. A fastball. Count holds at one and two. Thomas still bothered by a sore left shoulder. He heard that a year ago in spring training, diving for a ball. Let's have George Altman out with the shore, sore shoulder. He's doing the same thing. That was this spring. Once again, it's 1 2. And a curveball is fouled back in out of play. Thomas with sort of a three quarter swing on that one. Down now, one ball, two strikes. Only hit in the ball game, a bunt by Tony Taylor as leadoff batter in the first inning for the Bills. into the pitching plan to manager Gene Mock, and if he has a good year, Mock believes he can go all the way. Now he's set. Here's the double windup this time, and it fits back to Thomas. And he takes it just below the knees. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Manager Mock believes with Dennis Bennett, Chris Short, Jim Bunning, and Art Mahaffey he has four great starters, and also don't forget Ray Colt. Up is too low, ball three. In the bullpen, he has Jack Balsham, who set an all time record for appearances by a pitcher over a three year period last year. And also John Clipstein, who pitched very good ball last night. 
going five in the third innings and picking up a win. In between, a couple of other pitches. Now three two, the pitch is inside, ball four. And Frank Thomas becomes the first National League batter to ever get on base against Jim Bunny. That is in the National League game. Of course, he has pitched many all-star games. He's been in five all-star games for the American League. Larry Elliott making his debut for the Mets. Larry was put on the roster when Duke Snyder was sold to San Francisco. He's a left-hand batting center fielder. Made a good running catch in the first inning on a ball hit by Tony Gonzalez to deep left center. And the first pitch to Elliott is a little bit inside, ball one. Elliott's played in the major leagues before. He was with Pittsburgh last year for a few games. Major League home run. Played for Columbus throughout most of the 63 season. About a 252 with 26 home runs, 81 runs batted in, and 124 games. With Pittsburgh, he was 0 for 4 in the 1963 year. Now the pitch to Elliott is way inside. It just nicked him. He gets first base. That'll move Thomas down to second. The Mets now have runners at first and second base. One man out. And the batter will be. Sammy Samuel. Sammy was two for five last night in his debut with the Mets. Sammy, a right hand batter, deep in the batter's box. Frank Thomas at second base, Larry Elliott at first. No score in the game. One man out top of the second. Side. And it's pitch. Just inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Sam Wall worried number seven and playing at second base. He was acquired from Milwaukee and he was purchased. The Mets had him on a conditional purchase basis, exercise their rights the same day they exercise their right to purchase Bob Taylor. Bob also on the same sort of deal. Taylor last night drove in two runs with a single. Mets lost it as Lindsay told you, but one of the greatest opening day games I've ever seen. Now the pitch to Samwell. It's in there at the knees, a fastball. One ball, one strike. They're still talking about the play that Tony Taylor made in the ball game on Ron Hunt. He made a diving stop of a base hit. It looked like a base hit. Then turned it into a double play. Bobby Wine made a fine play, taking the throw and completing the double play. One ball, one strike. Jim Bunning back to Samwell. And he checks in time. The pitch is too low, ball two. start striking out the side in the first inning but here the Mets have runners at first and second with one out in the second two balls one strike running who worked very quickly in the first inning has slowed down and now he pitches there's a halfway check and a swing that's flipping out of the hand of Sam well while we wait for the bat to be retrieved, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're tuned to WGY Schenectady, your New York Mets station. Rob Kinder along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Philadelphia. Mets with runners at first and second base with one out. We're in the top of the second inning. No score in this game. Now bunting at 2-2, and there's a ball hit slowly down towards the shortstop, Bobby Wine. He goes to second in time. The throw to first base is not in time for the drive for the double play. And moving over to third on the fourth play at second is Frank Thomas. That ball is hit too slowly. Wine actually fielded the ball in front of the back at the throw back to Tony Taylor covering at second. Now with two out, the batter will be Al Moran. circle. And the first pitch to Moran. 
flag at third. Holding the runner at first base is John Hernstein. And the pitch back in is inside ball two. Two balls, no strike. Roy Sievers, I should correct myself at first base.
Friday afternoon. The gates will open at 11 o'clock. Game time will be at 2. Next pitch to Charlotte is pulled foul again. This time Charlotte out in front of the curveball, pulling the ball foul down by the coach's box to the third base side. The pre-game ceremonies on Friday will be at 1.30. We'll take the air at 1.45.
strike at all. Now Ballard at 3 2. And a fastball that put that ball strike three, and Covington's out of there. Threw that ball right by him, and that's the first strikeout for Tracy Ballard. One out here in the bottom half of the second, no score. The batter is Roy Severs, who had a three run home run his first time up in the game last night. That proved to be the margin for the Phillies as they defeated the Mets 5 3. Roy was one for three last night. Right hand batter. And Casey was a little unhappy with the situation because he says that fella kills us. And the first pitch is outside, ball one. If you recall, he killed Roger Craig here two times in a row. Roger with a winning ball game in the ninth both times, and Severs turned the game around. Of course, Roy's been quite a hitter in baseball. 311 Major League home runs. No score with one out bottom half of the second. Tracy Stallard against Jim Bunny. That's against the Phils. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Seaver. And he takes it on the outside corner. Good fastball. One ball, one strike. Wind blowing out to left field. Actually, left center field or center field. The good hitters park right now. There's a little check swing and a loopy line drive. Caught by Almoran at short. Stevens tried to keep the bat off that ball and got it on there well enough to hit a looping line drive. Now Tracy has two men out, and he'll work to left-hand batting play doll ripple. Played the catcher in this game and in last night's game. Last night he was one for three. No score. Two men out, bottom half of the second. The first pitch to doll ripple. Strike one. 
curveball. And a strike two to Bobby Wine. Wine with a wide open batting stance. This is something somewhat new for him. He didn't use this stance before. Sort of facing toward the pitcher. Now started into the windup and a two strike delivery. Again, a half check swing. Ball off of the bat for a foul ball. Wine again fooled badly. Cat holds it on two. for 
Philadelphia because Moran had a chance for a double play, but he couldn't get the ball out of the glove. And the first pitch to the right-hand batter is a slider on the outside corner. Strike one call. Allen in his debut this year at third base had a good day at third last night. He was two for three, made a couple of good fielding plays, had some trouble with the wet ground on a couple of plays, but that was not his fault. And the pitch back to him is hit to center field at the base end. Coming around from second base is Bobby Wine. The throw is cut off by Sam Rowe. The Phillies have taken the lead. What Baseball men in watching running pitch uh, for the first time have an idea 
there that you might be able to bunt him fairly well because he seems to come over there off balance on the first base side, but it never did work out that way too much in the American League. Here's a one-two pitch. Uh, 
short center field. The Philly defense was swung way around to it left on Thomas. So the second baseman, Tony Taylor, was going back, but Callison cut across and managed to get there in one-handed. That brings up left-hand batter Larry Elliott, who's been up one time who was hit by a pitch ball. Yeah. 
ground ball to second. Samuel has it squared. He feels it cleanly and plays on to Harkness. Two away. That brings up Roy Seavers. Set up one time and had a soft line drive to Al Moran at shortstop. The Bills lead one nothing.
clouds will be in Shea Stadium Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. The East Philadelphia Phillies will be out on Monday and Tuesday afternoons and the Chicago Cubs on Wednesday and Thursday afternoons. And that's opening up with seven consecutive afternoon games at Shea Stadium. Right now we're going to the top of the fifth and Tommy Tomwell is up. One time, hit into a fourth play to right-hand batter. Jim Bunning's pitch is high for ball one. Side the fastball. Going to the top half of the fifth inning, the Pittsburgh Pirates lead the Chicago Cup. one nothing. still Freddie Norman against Joe Gibbon. Good Bunning's pitch, and it's in there for a call strike. It's 1-1. One, one. Pirate game is the only other game going right now in the National League. Senators are batting in the bottom of the fourth, leading the Los Angeles Angels 6-2. Here's a pitch left low for ball two. It's two and one. And it's your Casey Stengel. Hip uh, hands thrust deeply into the hip pockets of his uniform. Doug out over the bad rack right now. Here's a pitch for run and loop back is short. Going back is Bobby Wan looking for a get a trust and for Texas League single for Sammy Somewell. So the Mets have opened up with a base hit here in the top of the fifth. That is the third hit of the evening for the Mets off Jim Bunny. And coming up a shortstop, Al Moran. He's been up one time and he walked. One for two last night, so his current batting average is 500. Phillies lead one nothing. The Mets trying to get something started here. Richie Allen playing even with the bag of third now. Batting pitch, and it's in there for a call strike as the punt was bluffed by Moran, and then he took it for the strike. Stallard comes out to the on-deck circle, and now Moran is being called out for a conference with Don Hefner. Be absolutely sure he is straight on the side here. That's trail by one. We're in the top of the fifth. Lead-off pass on base, nobody out. Richie Allen at third is moved in now on the edge of the infield grass in anticipation of a punt attempt after Moran bluffed the butt on the first pitch. Beaver is holding against the runner at first base. Bye-bye. 
by Covington, and Tracy Salad pulls up at second with a double. So now Ted Crane pulled up with two men out. Tracy Salad continuing to swing the big bat that he swung in Florida in exhibition competition. That is hit number four for the Mets off Jim Money. Mets had 11 hits last night in a losing cause as the Phillies won 5-3.
like beer, the more you like Rheingold Extra Dry. Because Rheingold is as good to your taste as it is to your thirst. You know why? Because Rheingold is food Extra Dry. And you need this very special way of brewing to get this very special beer. Nobody on and 
picture Jim Barry coming up. Then at one time, he tried to sacrifice and was a strikeout victim when he punted a third strike foul. Fastball, good curveball, and he tries to keep everything right down around the knees. 
Five-year veteran from Southgate, Kentucky, still has a rifle arm. Now Jesse stepping out for a minute. Two and two to count as he leads off here in the sixth inning. That wind really is switching around now, as Lindsay pointed out. It's blowing now strong from left to right. A swing and a miss, he struck him out. He got the fastball by Gander, one away now in the sixth inning. I got number five for Jim Bunny. He got three of the five in the first inning when he struck out the first three men in the batting order. Dean Mock, taking no chances, has Dallas Green continue to stay ready in the Philadelphia bullpen. Bunny was hit hard by the Mets in the fifth inning when they got their run. Swing and a miss by Frank Thomas, strike one. has drawn a walk, slide to right, nothing for one. The only day game in the major leagues today was rained out in New York, postponing for the second straight day, the Yankee opener against the Boston Red Sox. They will try again tomorrow afternoon. Next pitch on the way, he reaches for it and whacks his foul over toward the crowd. Out on the third baseman over, hoping for a play, and it is out of reach. He drapes himself over the railing, trying to make a backhand grab, and he got pretty close to it. game going right now in the National League is the game at Pittsburgh. And like this game, it's a one-to-one pitching duel between left-hander Joe Gibbon and young Freddie Norman, who came to the Cubs. Get the trade to send Nelson Matthews to the Kansas City A's. Later tonight, the Cardinals and Dodgers are on the West Coast and the Braves and Jazz on the West Coast. Houston and Cincinnati for the second straight day, not scheduled. Strikeouts number five and six for Bunning. 
No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. At the end of five and a half innings to score, the New York Mets won and the Philadelphia Phillies won. Well, you know, Lindsay, I really enjoy a vice away right after I've watched some exciting plays. Like when the bases are loaded and the pitcher takes himself out with a couple of strikeouts. Yes, sir, that's what I mean. You know, after you're all keyed up, it's great to relax with the ice away. It's the filter cigarette scientifically made to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. No doubt about it, Vice Roy's got the taste that's right. That's right. Vice Roy's not too strong, like some filter brands that taste as if they had no filter at all. And Vice Roy's not too light, like others. The ones you have to smoke more and more of to get any taste. Vice Roy's got the deep weave filter and a taste that's right. So fans on the road or at work or wherever you are, make your next pack of cigarettes Vice Roy. Not too strong, not too light. Vice Roy's got the deep weave filter and a taste that's right. Field, Larry Elliott actually playing him a side or two to right center. 
If this foul a back toward the roof, it'll be out of play. One ball and two strikes. Both teams, New York and Philadelphia, have a day off tomorrow. Philadelphia will have a weekend series against the Cubs in Chicago, and Art Mahaffey will pitch the first game, and Ray Cole the second one. Mets will be making history by opening their beautiful new stadium against Pittsburgh. It's over, strength free call. He knew it and turns and walks away. A strikeout number five for Tracy Stallard. And the big right hander from Harold, Virginia, has now struck out three of the last four men to face him. Center fielder Tony Gonzalez has fly deep to left center. Elliott made a good play on the ball. And popped is short, nothing for two. Here, Tony hit over 300. That ball strike one goal, and Tracy is really humming. Well, I don't know whether Tracy can keep this stuff or not for nine innings, but if he can, he'll be a tough pitcher to beat. Now he bounces the curve in the dirt, trying to get his bodies to go after a bad ball. One ball and one strike. planning to use public transportation for the opener on Friday at Jay Stadium. The IRT of Fleshing Line will be operating every six minutes from Times Square. They're using the Long Island Railroad from Penn Station, they'll be operating every 20 minutes to the World Fair stop at 11 in the morning and they'll kill at 129. 1-1 one, one delivery off the outside corner, two balls and one strike. Tracy doesn't like the feel of the ball and asks the plate umpire, Ken Burkhardt, for another one. And in a situation like that, Ken certainly would be sympathetic, being a former National League pitcher himself. Tony Gonzalez is an opposite field hitter. Larry Elliott, the center fielder of the Mets, swung over toward left center against him. Eddie Crane's rule has swung over into right center. Between Crane Tool and the right field line. A ground ball slowly hit down the first baseline. Solid after it. Picks it up and he tags Gonzalez off to reach out of the side. Another first play by Tracy Stoller to get Tony Gonzalez. And Tracy goes through the top of the batting order. One, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and then left on. Now six innings complete. The score the Mets one and the Phillies one. The big scene along the Rhine Gold Beach this year. Outside of your house and mine and Jay Stadium, I'd have to say it was the New York World's Fair. It'll be opening on April 22nd, and when you go out there, don't miss Rangel's little old New York. You know, it's an authentic corner of New York City as it was back in 1904. You'll find a Victorian-style restaurant, the Rangel Tavern, a sidewalk cafe, and a cool village green. The perfect place to relax, take your shoes off, and wiggle your toes in the grass after all that walking you've done. And concerts and other entertainment on the green, too. While you're at little old New York, enjoy a refreshing rain gold extra dry. As good to your taste as it is to your thirst, because it's brewed extra dry. So come on out to rain gold's little old New York. A wonderful place to meet your friends at the New York World Fair. Check swing by Bob Well and a foul ball to the crowd, strike one. Sammy has been up twice and on base twice. He reached the first time on a fourth play. Then he reached on a Texas League single to shallow left center field. We were concerned down in the Mets dugout now, apparently, as Casey and Tanner Gus Potch are talking, I believe, to Sally. Casey walks over and 
also double-checked with him, and we see Tracy Natting has said of the affirmative, indicating that he's all right. Swing, and a miss, he struck him out. Running the strikes last time, well, the bat flew out of Sammy's hands, and out toward the mound. Well, away and nobody out of the seventh before Moran comes on to hit. We pause for station identification. This is New Agent, New York, 1050, home of the... You're tuned to WGY Schenectady, your New York Met station. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Cantor. Seventh inning, one out and nobody on. Pitch to Moran, strike one goal. That's one and the Phillies one. Jim Bunning, a real strikeout artist, has now hung up seven in this game. Twice, he led the American League in strikeouts with over 200. and low, one ball and one strike. Let's will return to New York right after the game. Tomorrow, the dedication ceremony for the stadium. Then Friday, the official opening as the Mets open against Pittsburgh. The gates open at 11 in the morning. 1-1 one, one delivery. Swing and a miss. One and two on Al Moran. Al has drawn a watch. He tried to move a runner up and turned it into a double play when Bunning came off the hill to grab it. Next pitch by Jim Bunning. Strike, recall, he nailed it. He high on the outside corner. That's eight strikeouts. Moran didn't like the call, and now we rarely see it, but now a beating with umpire Tim Burkhart. Field and Galen 
Francisco start to warm up for New York. Wes Covington, a real dangerous left-hand hitter. Covington tonight has taken a call third strike and grounded out second to first. Now let's see how the Phillies play with a power hitter up there. They have to look for the bunt. He's around the bunt. Bunt foul, strike one.
One and two. A Stallard starts to wind up. Here's the pitch. Ground ball back to the mound. Stallard has the old Callison. Throws the first, and there are two men away. Now there are two men away. The infield can drop back. The hitter coming on. Left-handed batting play. Dal Ripple. Dal Ripple, the catcher, has grounded out. Second to first. Both times that he has come on to hit. to move from behind the plate and talk to your pitcher, Tracy Stallard. Game perhaps hanging right in the balance and the Mets fighting it to the hill. Philadelphia has two first-year pitchers perhaps just working out in the bullpen, Dave Bennett and Rick Wise. On the other hand, Casey has had Bill Wakefield and Galen Fisco warming up seriously. against Stallard. Two men down. Callison is on third. The game tied one-to-one last of the seventh inning. Here's the pitch on the way. In the third, a good save by Jesse Gonder. Jesse made a good play. Breaking ball in the third. He had to go to his right and dig it out. Ball hit. 
but the ball was hit so well it stayed in the air long enough to give Gonzalez a chance to get to it. So one man out here in the top of the eighth is four one to one, and the batter now will be Tim Hartman. Tim has driven in the only run of the game for the Mets. He has two hits and three times up. After having struck out his first time up, Tim has singled twice. Left hand batting first baseman. Tim standing very deep in the batter's box. And the first pitch is hit right through the middle on the ground. Coming over Taylor, he backhands it, knocks it down, can't make a play. So Johnny Taylor going deep behind the second base position. He got his glove on the ball, but couldn't come up with it. And Hotchins will have another base hit. That is three for four for Tim. And the tying breaking run is on first base now with Ron Hutt coming up. Ron looking for his first hit after having a two for five night last night. Been warming up for Philadelphia, left-hander Chris Jordan. He is scheduled to be a starting pitcher for Philadelphia, but with the early part of the season, Dean Mock trying to get some work in for his other pitchers. And some of the starters will work. Mahaffey is going tomorrow for Philadelphia against Chicago. And the first pitch to Ron Hunt is a breaking pitch in there. Call strike one. Ron has struck out rounded into a double play and fought out the center field. One one ball game, the Mets for the runner at first base, and one man out the top of the eighth. Jim Bunning working for the Philadelphia Phillies, and his pitch back to Hunt is taking a fastball and through for strike two. by Jim Bunning, the on-deck batter for the Mets will be Jesse Gondes. Well, the Mets have their third and fourth batters waiting on deck. Now the two-strike pitch bounce slowly to short. It's very slowly. It's throw the second and in time. It's throw the first base, not in time. Bobby Wine made a good play to turn that ball into a close play at first base after picking up the fourth out of second as Tim Harker slid in there. Exchanges with Harkness at first base. Two men out now in the eighth inning. And that will bring up Jesse Gonder. Jesse has one hit and two times up. Last night, Jesse, as a pinch hitter, was robbed of an extra base hit and at least one run better than on a great play by Danny Cater, who was playing in left field. Phillies have shown plenty of leather here in these first two ball games against the Mets. Dean Mark said, I don't want to see that much because that means they're getting hit too hard, meaning the pitchers. And Rob saw the first pitch, no tag made by Seavers. Ron Hunt there. Now Bunning sets again, and his pitch to Gonder is fouled back and out of play. One strike to the left-hand batter. Hit the Phillies 11 to 6. Now, again, a little toss throw over to first. No play played at all by Severs. He just took the ball to it right back. Brown with a fairly short lead at first base. He's a tie breaking run. And the fifth back to Gunner is outside. One ball, one strike. shifted completely around in this ball game. At the start of the game, it was going out to center field. Along about the fourth inning, it changed around and going straight in. It robbed Frank Thomas of a home run. He hit one deep to left, but the wind held it up. Not 1-1. One, one. The pitch is bounced slowly down the first baseline foul. Beavers picks it up. Three feet in foul territory. And the count now. One ball, two strikes. Hensley 
Army up the bullpen for the Mets, the right-hander. Third base on the bus. 
And the first pitch to Bunny. Then Bunny the first. No one is going to third. Archer's look goes to first, and he is out. Bobby Wine never did move from second base on the bunt. He stayed right there. Archer's went to go as though he was going to third. Never did have a chance to make it, though, as he saw the runner not going. He had no chance at second base to get the runner there, so he went to first. So Bunny is out. One man out. The runner remains at second base, and the batter is Tony Taylor.
and no one left on base. And the score at the end of eight innings of play, the Phillies four, the Mets one. But don't forget, fans, that there are many fine ways to get to Shea Stadium this year. The IRT line, the IRT flushing line, has trains from Times Square every six minutes going to the opening day game. And the Long Island Railroad has six trains from Pennsylvania Station to the World's Fair Station, which is right by the ballpark, starting from 11 a.m. until 1.29. Also, if you're driving, plenty of parking. And we understand that they're even coming by sea because there's a load, boat load coming on into the ball game that will be coming to the ballpark, and you can arrive that way, too. It'll be a big opening day. Celebrities like Paul Newman, Harry Como, Phil Silvers, Horace McMahon, and Chris Shore, Johnny Carson... Steve Lawrence, Edie Gourmet, Van Heflin, more you can name, many, many of them. And we'll all be out here. We hope you will be too. It'll be a big day. The first game ever played in Jay Stadium. Well, some changes in the lineup for the Phillies here in the top of the ninth inning. They lead by three runs, and here to bring you the changes and to tell you about the ninth, Bob Murphy. Okay, Ralph, Dean Mock making the defensive changes now with the Phillies owning a three-run lead. Ruben Amaro, who made a glittering play in the ninth inning yesterday, or last night, I should say. Really, it's Roy Seavers at first, and Danny Cater takes over for Covington in left field. Larry Elliott up in the ninth inning. Lays off the pitch by punting in a slow one ball and no strike. Well, we certainly want to re-echo Ralph's call on the great pitching job turned in by Tracy Stallard and a tough break for Tracy. Remarkable job when you realize that for the last two days he has been fed running a fever and carrying a virus. Fever cleared up only uh, this afternoon, and it was touching go as to whether he would pitch tonight until he went out and warmed up before the game. Foul ball back towards the screen. One ball and two strikes. He had the side retired, but errors are a part of baseball, and a throw popped out of Kim Harkness's glove. Tony Gonzalez has fell off to four home runs last year, but it went extremely well to the opposite field a three-run over to the opposite field. Right now, we're in the ninth. The one-two pitch to Elliott. All the way to the backstop. Nobody, no damage, but nobody on. Down is even a two balls and two strikes. Dallas Green, a right-hander, and Chris Shore, the left-hander, both cranking up seriously to be ready if needed. As the net hit against running here in the ninth. Without hit the Phillies seven to six, but now they trail four to one as the result of a three-run homer. A three-run homer hurt him in the game last night. A swing and a miss, he struck him out. Running, knocking number nine. Right here we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets baseball network. You're tuned to WGY Talk Radio. Hey, this is Bob Murphy. Your host for this hour. Let's get to the game. Let's go. 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 Let's go
Just missed the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. After the way Taylor drilled that one up the middle against the clip stand in the game last night, Gene Mock now has Tony Taylor and the shortstop, Bobby Wine, grouped close together to protect that middle. They leave the shortstop hole on the left side of the infield just about open. Pitcher for the Bills. Now 
Norris pitched a very strong ball game. In fact, stronger in many respects than Jim Bunny. He pitched eight innings, gave up one earned run, a total of four runs. He allowed six hits, one less than Bunny. He struck out six, five short of Bunny's mark, but Stoddard did not walk a batter. So the Mets lost it to the Phils, four to one. The Phils, four runs on six hits, no errors, three men left on. The Mets, one run, seven hits, one error, and seven men left on base. An opposite field home run from Tony Gonzalez, a three-run home run giving the Phils the victory. For the Mets, the big hitter in the ball game was Harkness, who had three hits and four times up. Well, that wraps up another New York Mets game brought to you by Flying Gold Extra Dry and Viceroy Cigarettes. Flying Gold is as good to your taste as it is to your thirst because it's food extra dry. Don't forget to tune in Friday. We'll be on the air at 1.45 when the Mets face the Pittsburgh Pirates in their opening game in Shea Stadium. We hope you can make it. And, of course, we'll bring you all the action if you can't get out to Shea Stadium for that great opening day. And be sure you have plenty of Rheingold Extra Dry at night. It's the favorite beer of millions all along the Rheingold Beach. Smoother, crisper, livelier, Rheingold after Rheingold. Now this is Ralph Gunner saying so long for Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson, our producer Joe Gallagher, our engineer Pappy Durkin, and for the brewers of Rheingold Extra Dry and the makers of Viceroy Cigarettes. Viceroy, scientifically made to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Vice Roy's got the deep weave filter and the taste that's right. Final score of the ball game, the Phillies 4, the Mets 1. So long, everybody. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.